Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's CN Matrix Wireless Aware Enterprise Switching Webinar. Today, we are joined by John Mead, our Senior Director of Engineering. Before we start, I do want to encourage everyone to ask any questions you have during the presentation in the questions tab on the control panel. But if you're ready, John, I'll go ahead and pass it on over to you. Okay. I think I'm ready. How's my audio, buddy? Sounds good. Great. Hello, everybody, and thank you for your time. Thank you for joining. Uh, my name is John Mead, and I'm responsible for the Ethernet switching portfolio at Cambium. I've been here for three and a half years. It feels like three months. <laughs> anyway, time has gone by very fast, very exciting times. Um, I'm going to talk to you about our Ethernet switches, and I'm going to focus more on how these switches um, are wireless aware and how they make your operational efficiencies grow with the, with the various features that we have um, and how these switches are wireless aware and able to auto configure your environment uh, when you deploy these switches. So let's go ahead and get going. The, the key topics for today is to talk about this Cambium solution. It's, it really is about a solution, not just I'll give you a quick little glimpse of our existing CN Matrix uh, portfolio. And then I'm going to start talking about kind of the meat of this presentation, which is what are your networking challenges today? What types of things are you facing? Any, anyone that runs a network, what type of problems are they facing? And how we can address those problems with CN Matrix. Um, the next item here is uh, one of the features that we have, policy-based automation. I will be talking about this quite a bit. Um, you know, in this mature industry of switching, it's really hard to differentiate yourself. Um, but we have, with, with policy-based automation, our customers are loving it, and analysts are starting to take note as well. So then I'm going to do a run through some PBA examples and, and really show you how it applies to you, and then we'll open it up for Q and A. So here we go. <clears throat> Delivering a superior wireless experience to service providers. Cambium's wired and wireless solution. So the first thing that I want to point out is, is I'm not going to talk about this as a specific product, right? What Cambium offers is a solution. Uh, we sell um, a wired and wireless solution with a single point of management. The wired solution with our CM matrix switches and the wireless solution with our CM Pilot Wi-Fi devices, but also our fixed wireless broadband. What pulls it all together is our uh, unified network management uh, system. Uh, this is either XMS or CM Maestro that runs either on-premise or in the cloud. Um, management made easy with hierarchical dashboards, uh, automation, um, uh, an awesome troubleshooting, and, and the list really goes on and on. Uh, when you onboard your devices, it, it makes initial deployment of your devices very, very easy when you're using our, our cloud-based uh, management systems. Uh, three key points that I really want to make uh, uh, that is especially applied to our switches is the zero-touch simplicity that you get with policy-based automation. So zero-touch, ease of use. So ease of use, meaning uh, ease of deployment, ease of management, ease of configuration, and ease of troubleshooting. The next item is automated security with auto segmentation, device profiling, and policy enforcement. And again, that's kind of related to our policy-based automation feature, and I'll talk a lot more about that later. And then wrapping it all up is our total cost of ownership, truly a industry-leading uh, total cost of ownership when you consider everything involved, when you consider the, the infrastructure, the base products themselves, but all the features that you need on top of it, the warranty, the support that you need on top of that. When you package that all together, uh, we really do excel as far as offering a very low total cost. Okay, so deploying resilient networks with CN matrix switches. So I want to highlight that today we have two portfolios or two families of switches. Now these switches are purpose built for these target deployment use cases. If we tried to build just one switch for everything, we would have had to have made too many compromises. It would have been too expensive for some, 
and, and not functional enough for others. Um, anyway, so two families of switches. We have our enterprise indoor access switches, and these switches have been shipping for a little over two years now. Uh, the code base that we use, very solid. On the, our second family of switches, which, are, which is our WISP tower switches, um, also uses the exact same code, hardened code. Now these switches are new. We, we just started shipping these uh, WISP switches this year as we speak. So anyway, two families of switches, enterprise switches and our WISP tower switches. And again, both of them are fully managed by our uh, CM Maestro XMS uh, network management platforms. And these platforms can run either on-premise or in the cloud. So what do you get with this solution? So operational efficiency, ease of use, I'll be mentioning to you this, a little bit repetitive, but ease of use is something that we put a lot of time and energy into. So we wanna make sure it's easy for you to deploy your products, right? The initial deployment of your products, how do you make that zero touch? We wanna make sure it's easy to manage, easy to configure, easy to maintain. And if a problem goes wrong, we wanna make sure it's easy to troubleshoot. Now, it's not just about troubleshooting the switch. It's about troubleshooting the network, right? You, you never really know where the problem is. It could be on an AP, it could be on the switch, it could be somewhere else in the network. But trying to make it easy to use and easy to troubleshoot is key. Um, we will never be finished with this. It's not like it's a feature and we have it today. We're constantly adding new ways uh, uh, to manage, monitor, and troubleshoot. So highly secure. So um, Every time you plug a device into our switch, we will uh, gather as much information about that device as we can, automatically enforce any policies that might exist, and automatically segment those devices. Um, we have our cloud on-prem network management station, we've seen Maestro and XMS. Uh, these switches, uh, these aren't your typical retail switch. These are absolutely enterprise grade, L3, L3. Uh, non-blocking architecture switches. Uh, so uh, these are these are very uh, robust switches made to make last. Um, again, mentioning the total cost of ownership. Um, and, and when you put these three components together, the wire, the wireless, and the management together, it really does make your wire wireless deployment simple. Um, so the CM Matrix, CM Pilot, fixed fixed wireless broadband, and our network management. System. Okay, so what are the challenges that you're facing today? Um, this list is a pretty common list. Uh, this first one here, misconfiguration, I've heard this many times. I'm not sure if I believe the number, uh, but it says here, and, and they say 80% of unplanned outages or 80% of misconfigurations are, are due to human error, right? Mis or misconfigurations in one way or another. The second problem is, of course, of course, security breaches, uh, devices that are on your network that shouldn't be on your network. Um, misconfiguration, and then this fourth one, human error. They kind of go hand in hand, but human error is, is the, I do it all the time, right? When I'm configuring a VLAN for a port, I accidentally configure the wrong VLAN, or I accidentally add it to the wrong port. It's an easy mistake to make. Okay, so, so what do we do about that? So the C and matrix switches and our PDA feature will protect against some of these common networking errors in your network. And, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about mostly today. Um, so with misconfiguration, human errors, and security breaches, what do you need? So automation. Automation is a key thing that we provide that simplifies performance. Anything that can be automated means that there's not a human there to make a mistake. Easy management of wired wireless networks, CM Maestro, again, highly secure networks. You want to minimize any chance for human errors. Overall, you want to improve your network resiliency, and you'd like to do it by reducing cost. And uh, I'll talk about this later, but I can't resist, right? So reducing cost, I mean, if you don't have problems in your network, that's a huge reduction cost right there. The time it takes to troubleshoot a network is very uh, costly. Uh, so uh, removing the amount of human uh, uh, configuration or manual configuration that you have to do, that manual configuration is time, time consuming and error. Okay, so PBA, let's, um, let's, uh, let's 
take a step here in the PDA and see what that's all about. So policy-based automation is a feature that runs on these switches. So it gives you zero touch provision. It will profile any device that's connected to the switch and it will automatically enforce any policies that have been created with the feature policy. And what does it do for you? Well, what I just mentioned, first it automatically profiles the device. As soon as the device plugs into the switch, it profiles. Automatically applies policy based um, on, on uh, based on device type. So if you as a network administrator have developed you know, five policies for five different types of network devices, it will automatically apply those policies to these devices as they enter the network. Um, once we profile the device, once we know what policy to enforce, um, one of the actions is to automatically segment that device into the right network, into the right subnet, or into the right unit. So doing all of that automatically. So, so far, we'll just kind of keep note of this, all we've done is physically plug in the device into the port and everything else is automated. And what else? So PBA delivers security, operational efficiency, and is wireless aware. And we'll dig in deeper into those things in the next slide. So policy-based automation. From a security point of view, we talked about the automatic device profile, the, the automated device segmentation, uh, the automated policy enforcement. Plugged in your device, you profiled that device, you then forced a policy for that device, which resulted in configuration of the switch and configuration of the specific port that that device was plugged into. But this last bullet here says auto configuration cleanup. That's maybe the best part of all, right? Auto configuring everything is pretty cool. Uh, it's a great tempo to give. But when you remove that device, it's even more important that you clean up all that configuration. So let's say you set that port to have certain FOSS settings, certain security settings, or you set it to be a member of certain VLANs, and maybe they're critical, sensitive VLANs for like the financial network or something. Um, and when you remove that device, we don't leave those VLANs open. We don't leave those settings active. We will clean up all the configuration um, that is related to that device automatically. So now that port is not left open on any VLANs, uh, for a malicious user to plug into that port and take it. Okay, simplicity. Simplicity is really the big one. Okay, um, zero touch. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later. When you initially deploy a switch, uh, I'm sorry, initially deploy a switch, you will get uh, the initial configuration automatically. So that's zero touch. But it doesn't stop there. When the switch is already deployed and you start adding devices, you start removing devices or you start moving devices from, from one port to another port. All of those activities uh, are zero touch as well. The configuration or cleanup of the configuration is all on. So I haven't really said it yet, but what this means is that all ports on all switches are created equal. Once you have these policies in place, you can then plug your network devices into any port of any switch. And that's because when you plug that device into whatever port you want, let's say port 14, <laughs> um, you know, we detect that device being plugged in, we auto profile that device, we auto enforce policy on that device and on that port. So um, I bring this up because the way people tried to provide zero touch in the past is they'll hard code the ports. So ports one through four will be hard coded for video surveillance code. And ports five through eight will be hard coded for Wi Fi access, so, and so on and so forth. But now you're forced to plug a certain device into a certain port number, and, and mistakes can be made. So, with PBA, every port is equal. You plug any device into any port. Okay, TCO, total cost of ownership. So, I'm talking about eliminating the error prone and time consuming manual configuration. Right there, you're saving a lot of time with your IT staff. Now, I'm not saying don't need your IT staff. The IT team is very, very busy. But this is one thing they don't have to worry about. So little or no IT required for ads, moves, and changes of these network devices. It reduces time, energy, and costs required uh, for, for managing these. 
Next slide. So PBA, I thought I'd go a little bit deeper to talk about how it works. So setting up a policy, what do you do? It's, it's, it's really quite easy. So first, these policies are user created policies. Um, and you, you, you will create a policy on a per device basis, a per device type basis. So let's say you have 100 video surveillance cameras. That would be one policy. Or you have a couple hundred Wi-Fi access points. That would be another policy. Or if in your you know, WISP towers, let's say you have you know, across all your towers, let's say you have 100 uh, radios. Well, you can write a policy for that one radio. Um, so it's policy per device type. Now, policies can be created using any management interface that we have on our, our, our box. Now, you know, these are enterprise grade boxes, which means um, uh, fully managed. So we have a very sophisticated COI. It's a Cisco-like syntax COI. Um, we have a nice user-friendly web GUI, but mainly we have our cloud-based C Maestro and XMS, which manages not just a single device, but the entire so if you create these policies using C and Maestro, that policy will then be pushed down to every device, uh, uh, every switch in the network. So create the policy once, and it's easy to do in the C and Maestro interface. It takes, uh, I, I could do it in 30 seconds. It might take one or two minutes, depending on what you want to do, but it's pretty easy to do. And then C and Maestro will push it down to all the switches that are part of that switch group. And, and we do support switch groups that are management platforms. Um, or we also call that virtual stack. It makes multiple switches appear as one. Okay, so these policies that you create have two components. First of all, you want to define the device type criteria. So how do you know that device that's been plugged in is, is the device you're talking about? Let's say it's a video surveillance camera. So how do you know it's a video surveillance camera? So that's the first step of the policy. The second component, is to define the actions. So when you do enforce that policy on a port or multiple ports, um, what type of actions can you take? Well, policy-based automation supports a long list of actions. The most common is VMs. You want to put that device on the right VM. Um, but you can also set the boss settings. Excuse me. You can set the user priority settings. You can set the switch port priority peak power over Ethernet priority state of that, of that port. Uh, port labeling is a silly one, but I think it's one of the most convenient ones here. It means it will automatically label that port. So if you plug a printer into port five and you're, you're looking through your port interface table, which can be hundreds and hundreds of devices, um, you know that one port is gonna be labeled as printer. And the best thing is, is when you remove that device, you don't have to manually remove that label. Uh, when you remove that device, uh, the label will automatically be removed. As well. Okay, protected port, a very cool feature that can automatically be activated um, as a part of a, a PDA action. Cambium sync, this is for our WISP tower. So when you add in a, a radio, 450i, 450n, or, or any of our radios, and if those radios need Cambium sync, the policy can automatically enable Cambium sync on that port. So the port speed, and then another really cool feature that we recently added is automatic device coverings. Um, this is a great uh, feature for your network to, to improve uptime. But if one of your devices that's plugged into one of our switches is acting up and not behaving, well, we have a feature that can automatically detect its behavior, detect that it needs to be reset. So you will automatically toggle the key. That feature in, is enabled on a per port basis, so that can be a part of this PBA action. You can automatically enable it for specific devices, but not enable it for other devices. So a PBA really, really helps in that piece as well. So this is something I mentioned once, but all this configuration I'm talking about, all this configuration that is, is a result of these policies, we consider that configuration dynamic. And dynamic configuration is automatically cleaned up or removed when that device needs goes away, is unplugged, or, or powers down, or, or anything. Uh, we will automatically remove uh, that. Okay. Zero touch is a term I've been using. Zero touch is a term a lot of people use. If you ask 10 people what zero touch means to them, you'll probably get 10 different answers. 
So let me tell you where I'm coming from. So zero touch ultimately means automating the configuration. So, it, so you don't have to do anything. So it's zero touch on your side. So let's talk about the case of the initial deployment of your switch, right? So when you deploy your switch for the very first time, there is some configuration that you're gonna wanna do. Before you even start connecting devices, there's some basic configuration you wanna do. I have some examples here. You may wanna create some static VLANs. Uh, the default VLAN for the switch is one. You may wanna change that to something else. Um, you know, which ports you're gonna use for your uplink ports. Do you wanna form any link aggregations? Uh, you know, your IP address, do you want to use DHCP or do you want to use static IP addresses? And the list goes on and on. So that initial deployment, how do you get that initial configuration on your switch without pre-staging it or without having to manually do that? Well, we do this at Cambium and, and, and we do it, the solution is CMI switch. So when you plug your switch into the network, a 100% defaulted switch, it will automatically go find scene maestro out in the cloud or on premise. It will automatically uh, go through the onboarding process, which means it will grab this configuration that you've created up on the cloud and you pull it back. So problem solved. And my definition of zero touch here is what most people think um, of zero touch. But I don't agree. <laughs> I think this is only half the story. So the second half of zero touch for me is the configuration that is required for ongoing network changes. So some examples, let's say you're gonna connect access points in your network. Um, let's say you're gonna connect cameras in your network. Let's say you're gonna connect a printer in your network. Anything, right? If you talk about IoT now, I'd have to list thousands of devices, right? But whenever you connect anything to your network, you do need to do at least a little bit of configuration on your switch. Uh, security settings, boss settings, uh, putting the, the port on the right VLAN, that type of thing. So how do you automate that on a day-to-day -day basis as you're moving these ports around? How do you automate that? Well, the solution to that is, is what I've been talking about, and that's policy. And remember, this applies to not just connecting devices. It also applies to removing devices or moving devices from one port on one switch to another port on the same switch or another port on a different switch. PBA handles all of that um, flawlessly. Okay, I've been rambling on about PBA for a while, so let me just kind of back up and summarize. The number one thing it does, it automates the configuration that is necessary when you add, move, or change network device. Number two, it eliminates the manual configuration. So the manual configuration is time consuming and error prone. Um, and by eliminating that, it really does simplify and significantly reduce uh, the troubleshooting that might be associated with accidentally manually configuring something. So anyway, it eliminates manual configuration. Number three, I mentioned this before, but every port is treated equally. So you can plug your video surveillance camera into any port of any switch and PBA detect it and the appropriate configuration will be applied to that specific port. It, it significantly enhances security, one by just removing the, the potential manual mistakes, but also by auto segmenting these devices into the correct subnet and or um, Kind of to summarize, it reduce, overall reduces the expenses required to deploy and manage your network. All right. We're gonna jump into a few examples here. Uh, we're making good time, so we will have some time for Q&A. Um, but these examples is, is it's really about making networks more resilient, more secure, and error-free. So, easy. So here's an example. Well, okay, first let me tell you, so I give demos all the time. And I have one switch sitting on my desk and I'll add in like one, video surveillance camera or one Wi-Fi access point. And I show users how, you know, I, I plug in this Wi-Fi access point and voila, magically the, the switch is fully configured. And I show them that configuration. And then I remove that one uh, port, that one device, and I show them that magically all the configuration has been cleaned up. So it's, it's a fun demo to give. 
But in the real world, you're not talking about one video surveillance camera, or one Wi-Fi access. You're talking about tens and tens of devices. So the example I have here, it's not even a big example, but let's say you have 20 switches uh, spread across some type of campus environment. Um, you want to plug in 200 video surveillance cameras, and you want to plug in 100 uh, access points. So how do you make that easy? You have to log into each of these 20 switches and set up a couple things, even a couple minor things, but set it up or you have to do it on a, on a per device basis. Um, well, that's the whole idea of PBA. The answer is no. You, when you plug in these devices, you shouldn't have to do anything else. So you create two policies. One policy is for the access points and one policy is for the cameras. And it's regardless of how many cameras you have. Now, if you're using different types of cameras, you could either have one policy for both types, or you can have two policies, one for each type of camera you use. It's, it's very, uh, very flexible. But anyway, you create these two policies on C and Maestro, you're done. It should take you, you know, five minutes or less. C and Maestro will push that out to every switch in your network. In this example, it's 20 switches. So once you've created those two policies, you're ready to start um, deploying your cameras and video surveillance cameras. So, one, you connect the camera and APs into any port of any switch. And when I say connect, I'm talking about just physically connecting, right? You just plug in the cable and you walk away. Uh, depending on the policies you've created, um, I have a few examples listed here, but the VLANs will be auto-created if they don't already exist, but, and they will be added to that port that where the device was detected. Uh, the, the POS and security settings that you've set up in your, action, in, in your uh, PBA policy will be applied and things like port mode and port naming, all that stuff's automated. So it really is 100% zero touch. So just take a step back and imagine this. You got 20 switches, you're plugging in 300 devices. You're really just kind of walking around and plugging in the devices, physically plugging them in. You don't have to log into each switch to manually configure it. Okay, next example. Let's talk about uh, more of a WISP environment with Cambium radios. So again, the example is just not, not one switch, but it's, let's say you have 10 towers. And in each tower, you have eight radios. Maybe you have four point-to-point -point radios, you know, two in each direction for redundancy. And then you have four PMP radios to give you a 360-degree uh, 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 coverage. Um, and you could have more than this, obviously. There's towers with a lot more than eight radios. But in this example, 10 towers, eight radios, 80 devices. So here, again, in this example, you also need two policies. You need one policy for the PMP radios and one policy for the PTP radios. Um, you would create those policies using C and Maestro. Uh, you set the detection mechanism. You set the actions that you want to take. And we're done. Again, it's five minutes or less. Um, and then once you're done creating those two policies, you're ready for deployment. You just connect in those radios. Um, the deployment is a little bit harder because you have to climb up the tower or, or do whatever, or wherever you're mounting the radios, you do need to do that. But when it comes to connecting it into the network or the infrastructure, you just plug it into the switch and that portion of it is done. It will automatically detect, you know, what type of radio that is it will automatically enforce the policy that is tied to that type of radio. So automatically, uh, this first example here is perfect, right? So uh, the Cambium radios need Cambium Sync signal. Cambium Sync is something you can enable or disable per port. So um, for this policy, we will automatically enable Cambium Sync. Um, uh, there's another feature, Auto Device Recovery, which automatically detects the health of the connecting device. That feature is something you can enable or disable per port. So again, that can be part of the policy. Um, and all the other uh, items I've mentioned in my previous example apply. Which VLANs do you want that radio on? Um, what are the costs and security settings? All of that 100% automatic, giving you 100% zero touch. Next example. Uh, this is a good one, uh, something that people ask about a lot. So I didn't have a good name for this. I called it super secure. Um, so the way you start with this is you create a default policy. This default policy is created such that it matches 
every single device in the world. And there's a way to do that on our switch, right? When you're creating a policy. So match everything. So um, with this policy that is gonna match everything, uh, these devices are devices that you do not trust, right? These are devices that someone maybe maliciously plugged into your network. You don't trust these devices. So you can either block the devices or you can allow it on the network, but you can give the quality of service setting, you can set it very low or the security settings, you can set it very high. Uh, on the VLAN, you can put them on a, a, a guest VLAN. Um, now, all of the, something I haven't mentioned yet is all these policies can be set with different priorities or different precedence levels. So the precedence level of this policy that you just created is very low. Now, the second step is to create the necessary policies for the devices that you do know about, for the devices that you do trust. So let's say you're gonna roll out 100 video surveillance cameras. Well, you're the one rolling those out. You know them, you trust them. You want to put those video surveillance, tra the, the traffic for those video surveillance cameras, you want to put them on a different VLAN. Uh, you, want to, you want to set the cost settings and security settings appropriately. So for this policy, you just set the precedence level a little bit higher than that default policy so that this policy will take effect and not the default policy. Now, if you plug in a device that doesn't match any other policy other than the default one, then it will be placed on the the, the, the guest VLAN and, and get the according the, the associated settings. So step three, the result. All devices that you connect into the network will be in the guest VLAN with, with uh, high security settings and low quality of service, except for the desired devices that you've created a separate policy. Um, so this, this concept is, is a big one for us. Uh, this is, you do this, it's just a, one more policy you have to create. Again, it takes a minute or so to create these policies and you're good to go. Uh, let's see, one more example. Oh, this is a fun example. It's a little bit silly, but it's real. It happens all the time. So accidental disconnection of a cable. Someone, the janitor or an IT staff member, anyone can be walking through the wiring closet and accidentally kick out or disconnect one of the connections. Or let's say you're in a, a retail environment and you're a clerk behind a cash register and you reach under the shelf and there's a, a Ethan switch in there and you accidentally remove a cable by accident. Well, what are you gonna do when that happens? Well, you're gonna kind of look over your shoulder, hope no one's watching, and you're gonna pick up that cable that was just removed and you're gonna plug it back in. Well, what if you plug it back into the wrong port? What, what's gonna this happens all the time. Um, what will happen? Well, that the new port that you just plugged it into, if the switch was manually configured, that new port has not been configured yet. So the port will provide power to the device. Let's say it's a Wi-Fi access point. So the Wi-Fi access point will power up. It will start talking to its wireless devices, wireless users. But on the switch, you know, the proper VLANs have not been added. So you will, the result is you get a loss in connectivity. Um, without something like PBA, it results in a loss in connectivity. It's an easy problem to solve, but you have to call the IT team, file a trouble ticket, get responses, so on and so forth. Um, this does not happen with PBA. So what happens with PBA? Well, first of all, when the device is removed, we automatically clean up all the configuration on that port, all cleaned up. It keeps your configuration file easy, uh, clean, easy to maintain, and prevents any security problems of someone maliciously, maliciously plugging back in. So anyway, step one, click automatically cleaning up all the configuration. Step two is when the person plugs it into a different port, well, that's how PBA works, right? We auto detect the device and we automatically apply the correct settings. So there is no loss of connectivity. So highly secure with auto cleanup. So um, it's a silly example. I like to give it, it's real life. It's happened to me. I've gotten calls about this exact same situation. I worked at another company. I, I've been building switches for 20 years. I was working at uh, Nortel when we were sponsoring the Olympics in Russia and we we're deploying uh, our wireless network. And uh, sure enough, 
the, the, the one of the IT guys um, put the wrong uh, put the Wi-Fi access point into the wrong port, which wasn't configured correctly. And they were able to fix it, but it took an afternoon, you know, to, to get the right people involved and look at the various settings and then to figure it out. Once they knew the problem was easy to solve, obviously. Okay. Now, I've been talking to you about these PBA policies, and I've been talking to you about zero touch. So I'm going to go through a quick little example of how you really tie the switches together with C and Maestro to make it a, a true zero touch experience. And it's easy. This is, I usually give this a, in a live demo. So there's three simple steps. The first step is on C and Maestro, you want to create your configuration. Now, you're either creating a new configuration or a new stack of switches, or you don't have to create a new configuration at all if you're just adding this new switch to an existing stack, because it will adopt the configuration of that existing stack. But anyway, if it is new, there's two things to create. There's the static configuration, like you, know, you want DHCP on, you know, the, all the configuration settings of the box. There's all the static settings. But there's also PBA policies that you may want to create as well. So anyway, you create this configuration, which has the static configuration as well as the PBA configuration. And once you've created that, that's the end of step one. Step two, is to claim these switches in your CN Maestro account. So you log into your CN Maestro account, you claim these switches using the serial numbers, and you're good to go. By the way, you know what the serial numbers are of your switches before you even received the switches, right? So you may be setting all this up before you even have the switches in your possession. Step three is you know you connect the switch to the network. Well, <clears throat> I skipped a step. You first power on the switch. <laughs> And then you connect it into the network and you're finished. Everything else is automated. You don't have to do any manual configuration on that switch. So I want to point out that that switch that you just plugged in, it's fully defaulted switch, 100% defaulted, just came in from the factory. And there is no need to do any pre-configuration on that switch. Um, and as I mentioned, step three can happen days weeks or months after you do step two you don't have to wait for the switches to do step one and step two um, the initial configuration is automated and downloaded to the switch during the onboarding process with scene maestro the day-to-day -day operations are satisfied when you download those pba policies that also get automatically downloaded during the registration process so fully automated with the PBA policies. And, um, and that's it. So, so three simple steps. Uh, you just plug your switch in. It has the static initial configuration. It has one or more policies that you may have created. And now you're ready to start plugging in devices, you know, whether it's one device, a printer in port five, <laughs> or maybe it's hundreds and hundreds of devices across multiple switches. But either way, uh, the ads, moves, and changes of those devices are fully automated, um, zero chance of mistake and errors from, from, uh, uh, from the human manual configuration. Okay, let's quickly summarize. So uh, two families of switches, what do you get? Operational efficiency with PBA. We really put a lot of time into, into ease of use, right? We really want to make these switches easy to use, easy to manage, easy to configure easy to maintain and easy to troubleshoot. So highly secure, minimizing the manual configuration that you need to do, minimizing the possibility for mistakes, automatically profiling the devices, automatically segmenting those devices into the right network. Um, the, the management infrastructure that we have at Cambium with CN Maestro and XMS, you know, being available in the cloud or on premise, uh, really, really superior solution uh, that enables everything that I've been talking about uh, uh, to, to, to happen. Um, the switches themselves, um, can't forget about these. I, I have a different presentation I use for this, but these are enterprise grade, fully managed L2, L3 switches, uh, uses a hardware architecture, non-blocking line rate architecture. Uh, so all your L2 and L3 switching happens at line rates. And you know, you summarize all this up, you know, we have five year warranties on our enterprise switches. We have three year warranties on our um, on our WISP switches. 
Uh, we have uh, support that comes for free, um, excellent support. You know, talk to anyone you know. Camden support is top notch. Uh, you know, you add up all those components. Um, you know, all the features that I've been talking about today. We don't charge licenses for these features. We don't charge extra dollars for these features. So, um, you know, you, you you buy these switches at the base price, and you get everything I've been talking about today um, as uh, as one price. So, total cost of ownership definitely definitely a leader in the industry. And I believe that is my last slide. So thank you very, very much for listening and your time. I can stay on as long as you'd like for a Q&A. Um, Riley, you wanna switch over into the Q&A part of this? Yeah, sounds good. You know, it's always kind of funny. I, um, I, I've been talking and talking for 30, 40 minutes straight and I'm hoping there's people actually still there. <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> there are, there are. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm gonna go to the questions here, if there are any. Um, don't see a lot of questions. Let me, let me go through a couple here. Um, does Cambium Networks offer professional services for partners who want to have everything pre-staged so when it arrives, it is ready to go? Um, yeah, I believe we do have some type of professional service. I'll have to check on the details, but thanks for your question, Ryan. But also, as I mentioned before, um, Pre-staging is so common, right? I, I've been doing switches for 20 plus years and, and everyone assumes that's what you do. You don't necessarily have to do pre-staging um, with, with the solution I described today. Um, you take your, uh, your box and you, your fully defaulted box, you plug it in and that initial configuration will automatically be downloaded during that initial onboarding process with CMH. Okay, next question. Uh, will the switches work independent of the CM matrix cloud? Uh, yes, absolutely. So our COI, very, very extensive. You can configure any switch, I'm, I'm sorry, any feature or any sub feature that we have with COI. COI is the most comprehensive management interface we have. So you can do anything you want with COI. So you do not have to have uh, CM Maestro. Now you mentioned cloud here. Um, you can run CM Maestro either in the cloud or on premise. But there's still some that prefer COI, and if you would like to do that, you can. We also have a web guru if you'd like. Um, is there any features for the switches that would only be available through CN Maestro X versus the CN Maestro Essentials version? Good question. So uh, Camium is in the middle of rolling out CN Maestro X, and um, you know PBA would have been a good example. Uh, for this, uh, that, that's, a, that's a feature definitely worth, you know, the, the CN Maestro X, but, you know, we've been shipping it two years now, so uh, we are not going to make it a CN Maestro X feature. So you do get um, uh, PBA in the essentials package. However, that is true for our EX2K series of switches on our EX1K series of switches. So the EX1K differs from the EX2K is we have a few less features, but it's much, much more aggressively priced. Um, and if you want PBA on those on those EX1K switches, you get you can use PBA if you use Web GUI or COI, but the right way to do it is using CN Maestro. And you do need CN Maestro X for the EX1K PBA functionality. Um, next question. Are there any features which require premium subscription to CN Maestro? Hey, thanks, William. Um, and I, I just answered that, sort of. I'll, I'll say it again. If you're using the EX1K switches, for PBA, you do need a CN Maestro X license, but for all the other features, no. Um, can you run an independent set of PBA internally? Yeah, PBA is actually executed on the individual switch. Um, it's not, execu it's not uh, executed out in the cloud on the management station. The creation of the policy can be created in the cloud with CM Maestro, and it is then pushed down to the switch, but everything happens on the switch. So if you wanna, um, if you have three switches and you wanna use COI or the web GUI, 
uh, to configure these PVA policies, you can do that. Uh, you, can you can configure a different PVA policy on each of the three switches if you'd like. Um, but I'm, not, I'm not sure when you would do that, but yeah, if you'd like, you can do that. Um, now, if you also are using C and Maestro, C and Maestro is the king of the configuration. So um, the, if you create policies or if you create any configuration locally, that will be overwritten by the configuration that resides at the cloud. But as for your question here, I'm assuming you're not using C and Maestro. You can use PBA locally and it will do everything I described. E everything works exactly the same. It's just, in, in, just that you create the policy with either CI or the web page. Or, or an SNMP application. We support SNMP as well. Okay, um, I think that's the last question I have. Um, let's see. Oh, I, I think another one just came in. Um, yeah. Are there any uh, VM images for simulation? <laughs> yes. I, I mean, no, there's not, but yes, I wish there was. I, I would love to be able to do this. It's on my list of things to do, but as of today, no. We do not. Sorry about that, William. Good, good question. Okay. Um, hey, so uh, I think we're out of questions. Just a couple minutes to see if any other questions come in. But um, you know, I touched on a lot of topics at a high level. I have, I, I could do a deep dive only on PBA, and I could give live demos of that. But anyway, reach out to your local Cambium representative if you want to go deeper. And I'd be happy to set up a call with, with just you or your team or, or your company or whatever. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm open for follow on um, discussions as well. So keep, keep that. Um, Riley, I believe that is it for today. All right, sounds good. Thank you so much, John, and thank you everyone for joining this webinar today. Um, we will be sending out a recording to all attendees, so be on the lookout for that. Um, but until then, I hope everyone has a great day.